So guys, so today we've got a dual monitor um, mount that I will be unboxing. So I got this from Kogan. It was uh, originally $89.99, but um, I got it on special because uh, if you became a Kogan first member, then you could get it for $35.99. So you'd be saving uh, like $54. And the Kogan first membership is actually a 14 day free trial, so basically it was like free money. It saved $54, which is damn good. And then also on the membership too. So I got this earlier this week. Um, so now it's going to be used by a dual monitor setup. Got some warranty stuff, some uh, advertising, which we won't be looking at. Um, and then also the manual, this we all need and you can see it's pretty nice design as well. And here we have this, so um, it's pretty heavy, so we've got this, I don't know what that is. So we'll just get everything out first, put the arms and everything with the screws. Allen key, uh, the clamp, pretty beefy. Um, oh, and the pole here too. Cool. So that's the box out of the way. So got parts here. It's the main pole. This is that. Know what it is. Um, and this part too. And tools. And this stuff. And then the arms, which are pretty heavy. Cool. So now the next part of the video is going to be actually looking at this and setting it up now. Alright, okay, guys, so I'm back and now we're gonna actually start assembling this. So, this might take a while because I'm kind of in that. So, first step is to get the bomb support done. So, this is part three. So, hey guys, um, so here I've got my parts and I need to assemble them and so taking the plastic wrappers out. I gotta get the screws to actually mount that pole to the mounting bracket. So Kogan has included uh, the various components uh, labeled in A to G, so it's pretty clear. And I've got my uh, my uh, screw screws there, and then also my mount key. So I'm gonna just screw it together. There should be three screws that you're gonna be screwing together. Um, and so this is part of step one that you'll find in the manual. So just make sure to tighten it and then the next part is actually the clamps. So those ones you'll have um, additional uh, things that you'll be uh, using as well. Uh, so um, you'll need an allen key and you'll also need the D type screws as well uh, which you'll need. Um, one thing I didn't do that I probably missed was the anti-slip rubber which is the part 6 which I think I forgot to add, but that's okay because you don't really need to actually use that to be honest. Um, well, I haven't, so I, haven't, I kind of forgot, so um, yeah. Anyway, here I am uh, removing the monitors and actually attaching the rest amounts, which I'll be doing once I um, get these apart and then get the rest amounts. So yeah. Guys, um, here is the part where I'm actually mounting the mount to the actual desk. And so you'll see here, I'm trying to adjust the position. Ideally, you'd want a measuring tape just to see where you need it to have. And then basically, you pull on that, uh, the arms. So the arms actually part of step two, uh, actually have these mounting cables or cable covers so you can add your cables to. Um, additionally, at the back, you have to um, 
Uh, it, it does have like this uh, clamp or like this mechanism to lock in place, but you'll still need to um, put in the actual screw, uh, which ensures that it doesn't slip, especially if you have heavy monitors. You might even be mo uh, having uh, even TVs or even because my monitors are 23 inches, so they're they're not too big. But they're still sizable, but they're not like the biggest. But it's still good to have that peace of mind unscrewing that screw in place. So um, I now actually screw it in place already. So you might find that it's actually better to actually put the arms on first uh, to the bracket before you actually put it on the table. Um, although at the same time it might make it harder to mount anyway because in this scenario I've actually got limited access to the back of the table. So it probably would have been better to mount my um, mount on first and then the chair arms and then tie them from the back which would just make it a bit easier. Um, yeah, so here we have my standing desk which I actually have uh, unboxed in another video and I'll actually be doing a review of it after having it for one month. So I'll just raise it to the highest level just to see what it looks like. And now I'm actually demounting the VESA mounts, which will allow you to mount your monitors onto the cable arms. Now with this, uh, you have to make sure that your monitors actually do have VESA mounts, so just double check that in the specifications document if they do have one before you buy those monitors, because that's really important to avoid any disappointments. And here I'll just the elevated the desk just to make it easier to access. So here we have um, my two monitors, they're both Dell ET, E2310H models, they're about 10 years old but they still, they're still very functional and actually really good. I actually got three of them for $200 which is basically steel, they were basically brand new, they were used for enterprise but like the vendor didn't need them. So here I have uh, basically the four screws are actually already included in the monitor. Now Kogan does supply screws if you want because sometimes like these screws I found two of them in the second monitor were rusted so it's definitely better to probably replace with the Kogan ones which are much more newer so it's easy to screw out and screw in. Um, yeah but otherwise most of the screws that I screwed out from the or unscrewed from the monitor from the first one was okay so I just used those but it's good to have any spare screws and ideally yes if you have an old monitor you'd, you'd want to replace the screws because they sometimes rust now if you don't have a new if you have a new monitor then it's not really a problem but some monitors might not include the actual screw heads so it's just handy that Kogan actually included those which I found really helpful um, but uh, yeah, other than that, uh, it's pretty straightforward. So just got a couple of the last screws out for this first one, and then I've just sped up this process of putting the rest amount in. Pretty easy. They have two mounting options: one for 100 millimeter and one for 75 millimeter. So if your monitor has a smaller one, at least it's still compatible. And if it has a larger one, it's still compatible as well, which is really great. Um, and basically the lock mechanism for popping it in is just very, very convenient. Um, I found it was just a very streamlined process. It took me probably just under two hours to assemble this all, um, being the first time. So one hour and 45 minutes. I think if you had two people to do it, you'd definitely have it done in like probably in half the time but I didn't have two people. And so this is my second monitor, so I'm just taking it out uh, and doing the same thing. This, this monitor I had trouble with the last two screws because they were really hard to unscrew for the last two screws. And um, I think it was just some rust or maybe something like that. And I actually broke my screwdriver because of that. It just, <laughs> just failed. <laughs> So I had to get another screwdriver to actually get this sorted, which was you'll see soon enough. Um, but this part was quite time consuming. Yeah, so there's my new screwdriver. So yeah, it was really time consuming. I thought the screw head was going to get ruined 
um, as you can see in the last screw so I was really careful to just not damage it otherwise like I basically do me I basically <laughs> do myself to actually um, not be able to use that head so I actually got it out which was really lucky and I decided I'm gonna use the Kogan screws to actually replace them because they're actually not rusted and they're actually new so there's the rest of them in got the four new Kogan screws which are much better quality and much newer as you can see stainless steel probably and basically getting the last two in and we're gonna get ready to actually pop those uh, monitors on the arms um, still waiting. okay so monitor one's on just like that pretty damn easy uh, you just probably need to secure the back just so with a hex or allen key because um, there's two um, two uh, uh, I guess screws that you can adjust for that for the stiffness. So this is basically step five. Previous step was step four, and removing the mounting plates was step three. So yeah, so you mount the two monitors. It's a pretty straightforward process. Just make sure you align it properly so that it will lock and pop into place. Um, and then you shouldn't really have a hard time really adjusting it at all because it's pretty easy. So basically the last step is just to adjust your screens so that you might prefer them one way like this, like side on or I don't know, or just like two by two or one by one, side by side. Uh, for me, I initially did uh, side by side, but because my monitors are pretty wide, I actually um, have now one monitor as a main uh, landscape one on the left side, and then on the right side, I actually have one rotated in portrait mode, which just makes editing easier and all that, and it makes my viewing angle uh, much lower, so it's easier to do. So, um... Here I am just adjusting the wiring, the power, and the BVI connectors. I actually used my mobile's uh, selfie camera to actually see what I was kind of doing. It sort of helped a bit, but I, I was still dis disorientated in terms of trying to get it to work because I'm not used to... It's, it's a bit uncoordinated, as you can see, but I'm using my mobile and it does help a bit. So you kind of just have to give it a go and see how it goes, I guess. Um, but um, yeah, it, it, it was a process to adjust it, I guess. Um, but definitely something that uh, is achievable and something that you can do quite easily. So yeah, um, I guess mostly that's, that's really that for adjusting it. Um, I'm not sure what I'm doing now, but... Uh, see I don't know uh, just adjusting the wiring that's that's basically it for now so you can see these steps a bit later hey guys uh, you can actually adjust the monitors in different positions so I've actually set up the monitors to tilt around to hear you can tilting it to the side by side you can also have it one horizontal and one also vertical as well and have a set up that all right so hey guys so now we're gonna actually compare why I actually bought the dual monitor mounts and particular ones I did. So here we're looking at the one that I bought, the Kogan dual monitor mount MK2. And when I bought it, the recommended retail price was $89.99. But um, Kogan has a program where if you go try Kogan first, it's free for two weeks, then you can get it for the product for $35.99. So you're saving $54. Plus, you're also getting two weeks of free Hogan First membership. And that membership basically allows you to have free postage on a lot of items. And if those items currently already have free postage already, then you usually get upgraded to Express Post. But the thing with Hogan is they basically have really good prices for a lot of items, but usually you will have to pay for postage. So that's the only caveat. Um, so I chose this one because the weight capacity for each arm was higher than the original Kogan dual monitor mount, which I'll show you here. So this one only has 10 kilos per arm, whereas this one has 12. And this one also originally, after 
this MK2 one got sold out. It actually went up to $169.99, but now they've actually brought it down to $99.99 and plus delivery. Or you could actually basically get it for $59.99 plus free shipping with the first. Though it's not as good as the deal as this one, which actually sold out. Um, yeah, so um, this one uh, it was is the first version, but I didn't really like it because of this arm design here. It's kind of it's not very it's not really very minimalistic, and also um, it could be just basically straight arms like this, but it would have to be like really strong and reinforced so it doesn't sag. Um, but yeah, I I think this one also you might be able to move a bit differently, but um, it's not as simple as this one where you can just slide it along here. So let's see, or you can basically push the arms in like that. So that's a really good feature to have, and you can move it up or down. It's pretty easy to do. It's all in one modular, which I like. Um, also, uh, I guess with this one, um, this one also, I think, I don't know, I think it really, yeah, it is really a bit um, different in design, so that's, that's really the main thing. Um, the reason why I chose the NK2 version was because of the price, it was much cheaper and it was at a discount of like $54, or its retail price. And originally this one was $89.99, so this was just a no-brainer. The only thing with, with this product is that uh, there was no reviews or anything, so that's what I usually check. But knowing Kogan, they actually have some decent stuff apart from some of their TVs. But um, yeah, this one was decent, had fast postage, it's, it's what I needed. Um, 12 kilos uh, per per arm and it was actually pretty easy to set up as well so I think that's that's why I kind of got that so uh, hopefully you you can sort of make a good decision based on this there are like other branded arms which are much more expensive which I didn't really like like oh because of price so like this one artist uh, 116.95 which is kind of yeah for me I'm just doing budget just getting what works. So um, in the next few weeks, I think in the next month or four weeks, I'll be posting a more in-depth review of uh, how I found the product, if there's anything that I'd suggest improve or, or if I'm happy with things. So be uh, in tune for that and um, do subscribe if you want to uh, be notified of that content and also turn the bell icon on. Anyways, uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.